Hey everybody, uh, Dave here, Model Talk for Life. I uh, hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, getting kind of late, I just thought I'd touch up on a few things uh, that has happened since the last video. Um, last I was working on was the my Eiffel Tower, the match detector kit. And come to find out, actually, that that was a little more difficult than I anticipated. Uh, definitely, t I, I, well, and at the time, I thought that the Eiffel Tower was definitely not a beginner kit. Uh, there's a lot of angles. Um, pretty much the whole Eiffel Tower is, is, is angles. So, uh, one thing you learn when you start building with matchsticks is that, of course, you know, if you got to put matchsticks together, uh, when you glue end to end, you know, that's not difficult. But once you start getting into all your angles uh, and then cutting the matchsticks at certain angles, uh, that can get a little bit challenging. Uh, and pretty much the whole Eiffel Tower is that way. So um, I ended up, uh, try to make a long story short, I ended up looking at another kit, uh, which is another match texture kit, but it's called the Country House. And... If you remember my last video, I mentioned that there was a uh, a lady that I um, have been talking to back and forth. Uh, she's into match architecture. She's been doing it for a long time, and she's given me a few pointers. Well, she's actually building the country house currently, and I thought I'd check it out online. And I figured, well, you know, this might be one that I'm really you know, I, I found it kind of intriguing, so I said, well, you know, maybe the country house might be the right way to start out because, you know, when it comes with the walls and you got the windows and everything. Uh, well, here, I'll even show you. Uh, here is the box of the country house. And if you look at it, you know, there's a lot of 90 degree, you know, sections. Like, here's the windows. Uh, you have this up here. And you have, you know, the whole, you know, so if you look at certain sections here, you know, you can gradually get into angles, uh, like in here, you know, some, you know, and you can take your time at, at, as to which section you work on, uh, and what angles you, you get into. Uh, this is by, by no means, I kind of got, you know, went from a non-beginner kit with the Eiffel Tower that I actually thought was going to be that that's more difficult uh, into this which is actually kind of defeated the purpose this is actually a lot more complex than the Eiffel Tower um, but just the structure the structural makeup of this house is actually something that I think I'm gonna find a little bit more fun because I can get into angles gradually well that's what I thought and maybe that's true in certain sections of this house but on the second page of the instructions, there's a super amount, a lot of angles. And, you know, I just got to the point where I just said, screw it. I'm just going to build it and fumble through the, through the angle parts and, you know, get, you know, trial and error pretty much, you know, until I get it finished. And actually, I just wanted to show you where I'm at with it right now. Um, I'm on the second page. Uh, the first page was simple because all it was was just 90 degree. Uh, there was only a f only four corners that I had to worry about, just a couple angles, and and actually those turned out pretty well. And you know, like I said, this is a good example as to uh, as to getting gradually into angles. Uh, this is the base of I think some of the rooms. So like if I lay it flat. Uh, this is the base, and uh, the house, this will be the foundation for the house. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, it's just square. Um, it's just a square square foundation with four corners that have angles. And those angles were not difficult to, to put together. Uh, and this is kind of what I, what I meant by, as opposed to the Eiffel Tower, doesn't have any, any type of, you know, gradually getting into it. This is. So... You know, in a way, this is kind of, was a little bit easier. Now, if you look at the second page that I'm on, that is definitely the opposite. Uh, much more compl complex. Uh, and I'll show you that here. 
I'll move the camera so you can get a better glimpse at where I'm at with it. In fact, I'll just take the camera off the off the tripod and give you a, a look at what I'm working on. Uh, so as you can see, that is the wall that I'm working on currently. And this wall kind of, I don't want to say the word stucco because that wouldn't be right, but it, it, the pattern, uh, it, as you can see here in the box, uh, you can see, whoops, sorry about the glare there. Uh, if you look at the, um, if you look at the house, you can see the walls are all made up of random different angles and, you know, kind of that way throughout the whole entire walls there, except when you get to the roof, or the, the roof and the, the roof and stuff, it's a little bit more straighter, but, um, yeah, if you look at the, the wall I'm working on, uh, this is definitely challenging challenging my uh, angle ability. Uh, and so far, I, I'm doing okay. You know, it's not that hard. It's just, you got to have a lot of patience with this because this is really small. I mean, you can tell just by looking at my hand here, the scale of how, how small this thing is. And all these little matchsticks, you got to cut out and cut the angles. And yeah, it's not easy, but... Uh, it is a challenge, and it, it's fun. Like I said, though, it's very time-consuming. So uh, that's where I'm at so far on the country house. Not not very far, uh, but I'm gradually getting into it. And that's where I'm at. So, uh, so my, that is my game plan here, is that I am going to... Instead of working on one kit, uh, being that I'm, I'm into this match detector thing now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend uh, a week on and a week off as far as working on this and Star Trek. So what, well, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus my time and my attention one week on match detector and one week off and then go back to working on Star Trek and do updates as far as that goes. Hold on, my cat's jumping. Get now. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I think that's the best way for me to do it because I enjoy doing both. Um, so I'm going to give updates uh, once a week on on match detector and then the following week on Star Trek and then I'll just uh, switch it up uh, every other week and that's how I'm going to do it. Uh, last week what I started to work on again was my Polar Lights 1 1000th scale Enterprise and I have not really gotten as far as I'd like to with this kit. Um, part of the reason is because I got a new airbrush uh, I got a Badger 200 series, I think it is. Um, yeah, I got a new airbrush. I was using a Aztec airbrush, and wasn't too fond of it. Uh, they claim the hobby store claimed that Aztec is the the model I had anyway was a really good airbrush, but I noticed Badger is an all metal. You know, they're they're metal airbrushes and. I figured I'd like that because the Aztec one is is plastic and wasn't really you know I've been using my Aztec airbrush for the last two years now and uh, it's a good airbrush I just don't like the fact that it's plastic um, it just seems a little bit cheap uh, I don't want to say chintzy but uh, I just I'm not really fond of it uh, for some reason so I ended up getting a good deal on a, on a Badger and I haven't even used it yet, but I've looked it over, I've looked at how it's, you know, built, and there's some weight to it as well. I mean, there it's metal, and I think I'm going to like that one. Uh, so I've been waiting for, I'm in transitions with my airbrush, and now that I have it, I'm going to have to give it a, start using it. Uh, but I have finished on this section here, the, the same section that you've seen pretty much in every video, uh, I finished all the Aztecing on this ship. I finished the neck, the pylons, uh, underneath section, and the uh, shuttle bay is also 
detailed and um, so this is all done. I, I got this all Aztec. Uh, I don't have any of the marking decals or any of that on yet. I'll have to get to that here soon. Um, so what I'm working to work on now is I've totally I, I've got the final coat of pearlescent white on this, and it's it's complete as far as the the primary colors on the saucer. Um, I have this all finished. Uh, the only thing that I did not like about this kit so far is the the Aztecing decals across the whole kit is very detailed. I mean, there are there are sections in here like if you look on the the saucer, there's this uh, there's this like little rounded type thing uh, towards the back of the the top. Um, that's even got a decal for it. Whereas like on my one and three fiftieth scale, I mean, all those little details you have to paint and where most of this detail on here you don't have to paint it's all in the the, the decals uh, which is really cool I mean and it's it, they look really nice one thing that they did not put in the decals that I'm just don't understand why they didn't is if you look on the bottom section of the saucer you'll notice that there's all these squares um, and I don't know if I can really pick it up here but if you look here there's all these all these squares right here, uh, right here, right here. So all these squares on the bottom, you have to actually paint on this kit. And same as same as the uh, the one and three fifty scale, you have to paint them as well. Uh, but for some reason, them are the only thing that they did not put in the decal. Uh, they did not put the squares in the Aztecing. Uh, they put everything else but them. So, you know, okay, fine, you know, I'll paint them, and I think that's what I'm going to work on this week, is I'm going to go ahead and mask all that off and paint them and get that started. Uh, so that's where I'm at with the saucer. Uh, as far as the pylons go, a little, uh, little history on what I did with that. Actually, I already had the, the pylons ready to be painted. As you can see here, I'll grab them. Uh, if you look here, the pylons are glued together, and they're they're ready for painting. However, one thing that I ended up realizing, and if you're at all familiar with how the pylons look on the Enterprise, is that there's this uh, middle piece here that you you put in the middle of the both halves of the pylon. Uh, and it has a white stripe down the center, and then around the white stripe, it's all black. Uh, that's right in in there. Uh, so this this section right right on the tip of each pylon, uh, you have that center piece. Well, what I ended up finding out on this kit is it's so small that it's like virtually impossible to paint the black in there. And even on my big uh, 350 scale model, that was kind of a challenge without getting the white in the, the, the center strip keeping that white. Um, so what I ended up doing is I decided to put these aside. I went ahead and I reordered, because I glued these closed already. So uh, what I ended up doing is uh, going through uh, round two polar lights. And I got myself a new section of pylons. So what I'm going to do is I ordered these and I also ordered two new center pieces here. Uh, so what I'm going to do this time, and I should wish I would have done this to begin with, is I'm going to go ahead and paint these first. Uh, paint these black and, and white and once I get these final painted I'm going to go ahead and attach these to the pylon and mask these off and then go ahead and paint the pylons and, and move forward. Uh, pretty much what I'm saying is I should have painted the sm these small pieces first and then glued it together, which I didn't do it in that order. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do different this time. And I'll probably go ahead and start uh, start going through and, and painting the, uh, the pylons also this week. So that's where I'm at with my Enterprise. Uh, I also have the Enterprise B, if you do remember, a while back that I started. Uh, I just don't have the time right now to work on that, but that's actually my my main my next big ship that I was uh, 
my primary model that I was going to build. Uh, this little enterprise was actually just one to tinker around with and have fun with the decals and stuff, but, uh, well, this is actually turning into a, a, a big project too, so. Um, I'm just going to work on these two, the match detector and my enterprise, and so this week we'll be focused on, on the enterprise. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. This is an update, pretty much just to let you know where I'm at and where I'm going to, how I'm going to move forward, so. Uh, also, I do have one question, uh, one final, on one final note that I want to leave off on is when I'm painting, uh, I have a room down in my basement that I have set up where I do my aerosol painting, not my airbrushing, but just spray painting. Uh, and I use that room for when I do my primer, my pearlescent white, all those I use just, I, I use the Tamiya, Tamiya spray painting aerosol and one thing that I've always had a problem with and more so now I don't know why I'm having a difficulty with this but when I'm spray painting my primer or, or my base coat or my final coat with the pearl white uh, one thing that I always have a problem with is I just have a small desk down in my basement in the room and I set my part up there you know it's all cleaned everything's brushed off it's nice and clean but when I start spray painting, when I start spraying on the uh, Tamiya surface primer, I always have a problem with lint. I always, you know, I spray it and I look over my model and then I notice that there's like little tiny pieces of, you know, not much, but, the, you know, on occasion I get like little small pieces of lint in my, in my paint. And then I got to be, you know, right there, right on hand with some tweezers to try to, you know, pluck out the, the lint or hair or whatever it is and then, you know, take it out carefully and then lightly spray over that and hopefully it'll blend in. I, I usually never have a problem with uh, with it turning out okay, uh, but there are times where when I spray and I don't catch it and I don't see it and then when it finally dries then I end up having to sand over certain areas that have lint in it or or whatever it is sitting in the paint. Uh, so my question to any any YouTubers out there, if you have any recommendations as far as what I can do to either minimize minimize the amount of lint that sticks to my model or to eliminate it altogether. If you have any suggestions for me, uh, throw it in the comments below and uh, let me know because uh, that really can be frustrating, especially if you don't catch it in time and the, the paint's already setting. Uh, so yeah, if you have any, any suggestions on that, please let me know and uh, I think that's it for tonight. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll talk in, well, in about a week. Have a good night. Bye. Wow. Back pirate. Back pearls. Pearl. Pearl.